Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you about my brand new Photoshop workflow course. It's a course I've been working on for quite a while, and it basically teaches you how to take an idea and bring it to execution, final product in Photoshop. And it, you get all kinds of problems when you have that, where your idea is maybe very fantastical, how do you find the photo or how do you take the right photo, and you get into blending problems, and all. there's many, many different scenarios where you need some specific filter or a, a layer that needs to be blended in a certain way. So here we go through a bunch of different projects. We start off pretty simple with how do you make something with a reflective source a little more exciting? It's pretty simple, but through a few little tricks, it's actually very simple, but you just have to learn it. So here in this example, you can see the before and after, and it's pretty dramatic. Then we get into, we have an idea to do something fantastical. Now there's a lot of different elements here, how to make them all come together to really communicate the idea of, I want to do something fantastical and otherworldly. So you can see them all kind of come together in the final composite here. We then take another photo, beautiful photo by my friend Serge Romelli, and we wanted to make it a little more exciting by adding some exotic element to it. So we take the photo and we plop in the tiger and make it all blend together with this, you know, color cast and uh, yellow, you know, light source to get some good color contrast and so on. And you get the final photo here. So pretty exciting. I really like the outcome of this photo. And then we wanted to try, let's try to make something very Photoshop-like. So we start off with a photo of a light bulb, put some water in it, put a fish in it, put some clouds around and some birds and a sun. It's crazy. There's all these elements, but how do you get them to fit together. That's the trick, and that's what you learn in this course. So there are many more projects like this, which you can see in the before and afters, but we really tackle subjects like, you know, water reflections, refractions, shadows, and where the light source comes from, how do you do proper lighting and blending modes, how do you mask things like uh, different layers or groups and adjustment layers. Anyway, all these tools to make proper composites and retouching. This is really the best course I've ever done, the most meticulous. I really took the time to start off simple so that by the time you're done, even if you started off fairly, you know, beginner level, by the time you're done, you know how to make composites, advanced composites, something that has complexities like water refractions and reflections and how to blur and lots of things to make things real in composites. Things that seem pretty complex, but just going through the motions are pretty simple. So if there was ever a time you wanted to buy a Photoshop course, this is the course for you. And uh, as a sneak peek, here's the first lesson for free. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the first lesson of my Photoshop workflow course. In this lesson, we're going to cover what the workflow and process is of getting a photo that has some form of water, glass, or any kind of reflection, and how to make it a little more dramatic give it that little something that makes it special. So here you can see the before and the after. It's actually really simple. The, the change is pretty dramatic, but I like it. All right, so for this first lesson, uh, go into the uh, folder with the lessons, and you'll see this 01 landscape water. So just open that JPEG into Photoshop, and we have it here. OK, let me just reduce that. So I have the Essentials uh, workspace, which you can change over here. See if you hit Essentials. It should look exactly like this. And because I actually don't want this group, I'm going to close it, close tab group, and I have a little more space. All right, so um, first things first, what I want to do in here is essentially show you how to um, create more reflective water and make it look even silkier. This is actually really nice, but we can make it look even more interesting. So uh, let me show you. Uh, first thing we do is um, we're going to address this actually uh, by bank, all right? So I have this bank over here that I want a reflectiveness to it, and then this bank, and then this bank. So it's really three different banks. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer, just drag the background to the new icon over here, and it creates a copy, all right? And then uh, what we're going to do is uh, transform this. So if you go to the Edit and Free Transform, you get the Free Transform uh, box here, and you can right click in here and say Flip Vertical. All right, so now it's upside down. And you can bring this down, hold down, holding down Shift. And I want to use these mountains um, in the reflectiveness. I'm just going to hit Return, so that's applied now. And uh, before we uh, continue, I need to, we need to actually break the image up. So 
we, we're missing uh, our rulers here. So if you just uh, go into here and hit rulers, now we have our rulers. And I do this because I want guides. And we're going to uh, click from the ruler and bring out a guide. I want one right here that's basically going to cut this, this bank and separating it from this one. And we'll do another one. See, these two are kind of overlapping a little bit. So we'll just take it right there. All right. So what does this mean? I bring back this layer, which I hid by holding on the eye, the little eye icon. And I'm going to bring the image all the way up. And we're going to split it up. So we're going to split into three. So first, make a selection of the right side. And you're going to go to a layer. And you said new, new layer via cut, all right? Or the the uh, shortcut Shift Command J. All right, and on a on a PC that's Shift Control J. All right, so you see that separated out and made two layers out of that selection. I go over here and select the one on the left, and same thing, new layer via cut. All right, and now I can hide these guys that they no longer need to be here. So we can go to View and. Extras, show extras, command H is good enough. There we go. So we have a little little uh, bleed over here, but that's fine for now. OK, let's go to the right side. And uh, we're going to hide these other ones. Uh, in fact, let's make a group out of these. So you're going to shift click this and this, and then the little group icons. So and now we have our group in here, and the layers are inside. We'll name this uh, Reflections. OK, and these layers. Uh, they're actually all going to be at soft lights. Okay? And now um, with the move tool up here, bring this down. And I want, see what I want is this, this mountain range, I want it to be reflected in the water here. So I kind of find this is the match, this is the exact mirror point right here, right? And then now I'm going to hit Command T for the free transform like we did earlier, which you can find also in the edit menu, free transform. And I'm going to hold on the command on this right side and shift. And I'm basically going to skew the whole image to try to create more mirrored uh, image in here. So it's a little more, it looks like a mirror. I'm trying to make that coast kind of match right there in, uh, in the middle. So um, we can also let's bring this up a little bit. I want to try uh, to just make this a little less tall. All right, I'm squeezing it. I know I'm cheating. It's not supposed to be like that. But I want to get as much reflectiveness as possible. OK, so something like this I think is pretty good. OK, and I hit Return. And then I take the next one. So the middle one, let's bring this up a little higher. And once again, Soft Light and Command T. And let's bring it down and find the middle part, so the where it's actually mirrored. and. It would be somewhere up here. Yeah, here we go. Something like this. And uh, Command Shift to really skew this down here. Something like that. OK. Once again, I think we need to make it a little less tall. Something like that, which means we can bring this down. I'm trying to get more, more of that reflectiveness in it. OK. And also, I want this to kind of match. So you see this, this kind of a, looks like a, it's kind of meets. Let's undo that bit. There we go. OK, something like that. Maybe a little higher. OK, that's not too bad. And if I do bring this, I can't do, I can't do too much here. All right, that's good enough for this one. Hit Return. And then we're going to do the third one over here. Once again, Soft Light. And this one should be a little easier. It's a little flatter. Command T, and then hold on Command and Shift, or Control and Shift on a PC. Let's make this big. So I'm holding an Option, which means that when I reduce it, it reduces it on both sides, which is a nice little feature. And let's bring this up a little higher, a little higher. Here we go. And let's see if we get any anything in it. I think it is pretty good. Somewhere around here. All right. <clears throat> OK. So now we have that. Now the problem is it's obviously going over everything else, and we don't want that. Also, another thing is I want this to kind of fade out because it's it gets cut off, so I don't want that. Um, but we'll we'll fix this in a second. Go to the group here, and and you hold down the Alt key while you make a layer mask. That adds a layer mask that hides everything. All right, so it's all black. And if I take a brush, B for brush, and we make a um, let's do a smaller, let's do a 
pretty small brush. Something like this is good enough. And we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to unmask the whole water area, all right? So hit this little button here, or X, and now you need to take a bigger brush, and the opacity has to be on 100. You go in here and on the mask, and I'm basically now going to reveal what, what we had, those, those layers that we created, right? So like this, and you see it's kind of adding this pretty cool depth. I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit. So Command and Alt and hit the plus. It's a nice, neat little uh, way to zoom in. And uh, there you go. Make it a little smaller here. Whoops, not too small. And just kind of add this on the coast. Yeah, so you can you can kind of play around with the, the amount of detail you want to do on it. Um, I don't mind overlapping a little bit on the land. Kind of darkens it a little bit. And um, yeah, and that, that sort of mirrored look really, I don't know, it gives it that extra depth that I don't really want it on the island too much, so kind of just hide that around there. Okay. What are we looking at here? It's pretty good. Okay. And we need this N2. So go in here. Let's make this a little small. The shortcut, by the way, for the uh, changing your brush is Control and Alt. Uh, a shortcut that you should get familiar with because it is very useful and will change your speed considerably. Um, all right. So I'm just I'm just brushing it in here, all 100%. Well, I could do this at varying degrees, but I kind of like kind of like seeing it like this. I'm like revealing this reflection that's kind of cool. So something like this. Make it a little bigger here. Try not to go on the land, try to just keep it on the water. And you see it's, it's doing this almost dodge and burn feel to the water. All right. <coughs> so um, here you notice that I kind of faded it out here. That's because my image was actually cut. So and if you look at before and after, that's pretty, 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 pretty cool. I like that. So that's a cool little trick, and it uh, really helps uh, bring uh, bring some life back into uh, some some water. Another thing that what I, that I would do is uh, go in here at the top of the uh, reflections and and take a uh, create a curves adjustment layer, and let's just do um, a little more contrast. So darkens the darks and lighten the lightens the uh, highlights. Now you'll notice that this curve um, probably looks upside down to you. The to to get the uh, display options, you click up here, and you'll notice that mine's at pigment ink, and, it, and yours is probably at set to light, which means that the shadows are on the left, and you darken your shadows by doing this, and you lighten your highlights by raising it up here. So this is the default, and I like seeing it like this, because I come from a print background, and it's just the old habits. So something like that. And, and it would be nice to have a little vibrancy. And you notice that it's only doing it on these areas that are masked, and that's because it's within the group. That's, uh, that's a pretty cool trick, too. So let's go to the vibrance, and let's just uh, crank it up a little bit, get some of those blues kind of coming out. So let's see that before, after. That's pretty cool. And the whole thing before and after, pretty dramatic, pretty dramatic change. All right, so and we can just go ahead and save as, and we'll put it in this thing in landscape water, and now you can check it out, and you'll have that PSD. There you go.